hello the camera's too dang gone close so let me move it back a little bit um thank you so much for tuning in let me stop that all over because that is not how you're supposed to come into a video hello 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 everyone thank you for tuning in i am jaylee this is jaylee's corner and this is my review for team mom see team mom 2 season 8 episode i don't remember 15 um today was an okay episode wasn't a lot of craziness going on. Janelle didn't get on my nerves too much, and neither did Brianna all that much. Um, a lot of uh, difficult conversations within Leah's situation. Um, but for the most part, it was a good episode. Um, I think I will start with. Of course, I think I always start with the Chelsea or Leah because their stories are always kind of easier. Um, Chelsea's story is simple she was planning her wedding well not really her wedding more of her reception um you know as we know her and cole already are married but they want to have a reception after she'd had the baby because who wants to have a reception if they can't drink you know what i'm saying um so she is going to see her party or her wedding planner to talk about the wedding and they have decided they don't want to have the reception kind of far away because who wants to travel just to go to reception nobody so she's like you know instead want to have something closer and you know it's like i'm good with just finding the park and pitching up a tent chelsea is very much a simple girl with certain things um i'm not an outdoor person like when i get married the wedding will be inside of a building their reception will be inside of a building. Only because when you outside, you have to deal with the elements. And I'm not a girl who likes to deal with the elements. Even if I go to someone's wedding and it's outside, I'm looking like, oh my God, why does it have to be outside? Because um, I don't like bugs. I don't like sweating. I don't like to be in the sun too long. Like, I'm very just like, you know. But if it's a nice day out and it's a nice, but the weather is always so fancy, you just never know. But anywho, yeah, so she's like, you know, I'm okay with that. So the wedding plan, like, okay, that should be easy. We can just find a location, you know, pick a tent, you know, we'll get caterers, we need food and all that stuff. So they do end up finding, like, a park that will let them, like, you know, just put up a tent. And so all they had to do now was, like, the food and stuff like that because the location was easy. And I think that's sometimes the best way to do things. Like, if you're already married why try to spend, you know, all this money just so that other people can be happy, so to speak? Like, you see people who spend thousands and thousands on a wedding, and it's more for the other person. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like like when I get married, I want it to be a small wedding. This is how, you know, I don't mind even going down to the courthouse or just having, like, my immediate, like, just, like, my... Like, just like my mom, my sister, my nephew. You know what I'm saying? Something little like that to where, hey, we engaged. We going to get married tomorrow. You know, his parents, my mom, my, you know, my mom took my dad's best way. So, my mom, my sister, you know what I'm saying? Something quick, like, I don't want a whole big to do. And I probably do the same thing, like, have a reception, party later, but not try to spend all that money on a party. So, I like that she's, you know, kind of making it simple. Um... The only other part that the episode was about was she was talking about wanting to get Aubrey's um, custody agreement changed because, as we know, Adam is on drugs. He tested positive for some drugs. You know, when Aubrey goes over there sometime, he's not even there. Um, she's scared that, you know, he could be getting high with her there. And she's just trying to take precautions. So she's trying to figure out how she can get the custody agreement changed in some form or some fashion. Um, she also wants to look into getting Aubrey's last name changed, not take away Adam's last name, but just hyphenate it to include Cole's last name simply because Aubrey wants it that way too. You know, it's her last name, it's her husband's last name, her dad, as we see, kind of is not in the picture. Um, you know, that's her brother's little brother last name. So, sometimes when a child is young, and if the biological father isn't around, and the child... You know, like when you're a blended family like that, um, 
I don't see a harm in it. Some people might not like it because they can be like, why would you... Why would you change your child's last name? But the thing about it is, you know, her and Adam weren't married. You know, she gave Aubrey Adam's last name. Um, and if that's also what Aubrey wants, solely because, as you see, in this particular family, in this particular dynamic, Cole is her father figure. You know what I'm saying? So that's not too radical of a thing, to, you know, to, for her to think about, especially the fact that we see her talking to Aubrey and she's asking Aubrey, do you really want this? Like, why do you want this? And she's like, well, I want to have the same last name as you guys. And we see that she genuinely loves Cole, that Cole genuinely loves her. And again, she's not taking away Adam's name. She's hyphenating it so that she would have both her dad's last name, you know, and that's what it is. And, you know, of course, Cole is honored that she would want to do that. Um, because it makes them, you know, a whole blended family. So, that was Chelsea's whole story. Um, Leah's story was kind of easy today, too. The reason I said it was, I can't think of what I said it was. But basically, like, the scene starts out, you know, with Leah's driving in the car. And, you know, uh, I think Allie asked for, like, some big jerky. And when Leah hands it back there, Aaliyah grabs it and kind of doesn't want to give it to Allie. And they kind of fight a little bit, but you see Aaliyah keeping the bag of stuff from her sister. She then hits her sister when her sister's trying to grab the bag that she asked for. You know how kids are. And, you know, so she hits her sister. Her sister hits her back. And then, okay, Leah pulls over because it's the whole thing. And what you notice is Aaliyah kind of is like, well, she didn't ask me if she can have it. And Leah was like, she doesn't have to ask you, she asked me. You can kind of see that Aaliyah, because Allie, you know, has muscular dystrophy, you can tell that Aaliyah feels some kind of way. But that's how children, that's how, no, that's how siblings of children with some kind of disability feel sometimes. I work, I won't say I work, I work at a place where we help autistic children. Um, and so I've seen how siblings of children with autism feel different because it's something that you have to deal with too. So as far as in Aaliyah and Allie's situation, the sibling of the child with a disability at times feels neglected, feels left out, feels like they are treated differently because their sibling gets a lot of attention, not even understanding at that young of an age that they need that attention because they they physically can't do certain things. But as a kid, you just like, mom and daddy paying all the attention to my brother or my sister and I'm, you know, they act out. And we see Aaliyah is acting out as we see her hit her sister, her sister hits her back and she's like, you know, but I didn't even really hurt her. And it was, I'm like, you know, it's, but no, that's not what she said at that point. She said, I forgot, what did she say? I forgot what she said, but she kind of made it seem like she didn't do anything wrong. And she was like, well, she hit me, but it's like, but you hit her first and you held the bag from her. But again, it's, it's that thing of, you can kind of see that Aaliyah's acting out because her sister gets attention. And, you know, but. Leah is like, well, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't have to ask you for things, you know, and your sister's a little bit different. But again, Aaliyah doesn't get that because she's so young. Um, but, you know, Leah handled it in the best way she could. She pulled over. She took the bag from them both. And she said to Aaliyah, your sister asked me for the bag. She doesn't have to ask you. And she just kind of told her, like, it, it wasn't okay what she did. Um, the next thing that we see, we see that now Corey is with the girls. And they are fishing and Allie is kind of over she's ready to go Aaliyah's fishing she catches a fish and everything so you kind of see how Corey kind of made them both feel okay like Aaliyah wanted to fish so they were fishing but Allie was ready to go so after Aaliyah caught a fish she's like okay now we can leave I've kind of satisfied you both and when they were on their way back to the car and everything you don't see exactly what happens in the car because the camera crew was camera crew wasn't right there but you can see that Allie is in her seat in her car seat and Aaliyah is doing something to her and you assume 
because Aaliyah, you know, Allie then starts crying. And you hear them kind of tussling. You know what I'm saying? So you, I guess it's, it's, it seems like Aaliyah likes to exert her dominance over her sister. And that's her way of kind of acting out because she probably feels like she just needs attention. And Corey was not having it at all. You see him instantly go to the truck. He takes the toy from them. And he's like, y'all, you know, and he, I think he might have spanked one of them, which I'm not against spanking. I was spanked as a child. It's okay. As long as you're not abusing them, it's the difference between getting spanking and being abused. And, you know, he's like, if y'all can't act like seven-year-olds, you know, y'all not going to play with the toys. So he took the toy away, and then he then talked to them, and he was saying to Aaliyah, that's her toy. You can't get mad at her for her toy. And she's like, but I had it first. He's like, but it doesn't matter. It's her toy. You know, if it's her toy, just give it to her. But again, it's a thing, because then she, this is, what, this is what she said, you know, but I didn't even hurt her. So for me, I thought that meant she hit her in some form or fashion, but feels like as long as I don't hurt her, whatever I do to her is okay. And Corey's like, but you can't do that. So Corey sees it's an issue. So Corey's then talking to the producer, like, you know, yeah, you know, we I noticed that Aaliyah is aggressive towards Aaliyah is aggressive towards Allie. You know, it's because she feels like she's different and her sister gets more attention. So if I'm sitting here talking to Aaliyah, to Allie about her wheelchair or giving her whatever special attention, she wants that attention so she acts out and she does different things. He's like, I think she needs counseling. Like, we have to get her to counseling because, you know, this is this just isn't right. Um, he talks to Leah about it and Aaliyah, and Leah agrees that they need to do something. Uh, maybe go to a concert within the, you know, their town and everything, but they're on the same accord that they have to do something for Aaliyah because they both notice it in one way or the other. And there's an ending scene where Leah is talking to Aaliyah and she's just saying to her, you know, do you ever feel like we treat your sister different? And she's like, yeah, sometimes I feel like you guys give her more attention. I do feel different. Um, just how she feels different things. And it was just Leah's way of talking to her saying it's okay to feel like, it's okay to feel that, but you have to express it in a, a, a positive way. Um, and then she's like, how you find, how would you feel if we went to conference that you can talk about how you feel? And I, I love the way Leah did it because she did it not making Aaliyah feel like she was in any trouble or not like she had to go to counseling because something was wrong with her. She made her, she made it, she said it like, we know you feel differently, so for you to get out your emotions, this is what we're going to do. And are you okay with that? And she said, yeah. She also thought, is it my fault, you know, that she has the disorder? Because I, I squished her. She feels like because she's taught the taller twin and when they were in her mom's belly, that because she was the bigger twin that she squished her and that's why her sister is you know, has this disorder, so she kind of feels like it's her fault, and Leah has to say, it's not your fault at all, you know, you know, Ali just has a, a, a mutated gene, but of course, she didn't know what that meant either, but she's like, you'll learn about that earlier, you know, when you get older, but it's not your fault at all, it, it has nothing to do with you, um, but we're going to get you, you know, into some comments so that you can talk about how you feel, so I thought that was a good thing, and how they, um, treated that particular situation. Um, what else? Janelle. <sighs> Caitlin's story was pretty easy, too. It was basically about her and Javi. You know, she wants to go on a vacation before she has the baby. It's like, you know how when you, well, you might not know if you're never been pregnant. But when you are pregnant, there's up to a certain time in your pregnancy when you can't fly anymore. And Kale's almost approaching that time frame. So she wants to take the kids to, you know, on a vacation like the last vacation before the third baby comes. But they have this court case coming up for Javi taking her to court for child support. And she's like, but Javi said he's going to drop the child support case. You know, so that way it shouldn't be an issue. So then they go show Joe, not Joe, damn it, Javi. And Javi's like, well, yeah, I'm going to drop it when she shows me proof that she dropped the protection order against me. Like, I want to see proof of that and then I'll drop the child support. And he's like, but I, ha you know, I haven't dropped it yet because she hasn't shown me proof because Kale is known for saying she's going to do something and she doesn't do it. And so it's just a thing of when, you know, Javi brought Lincoln back and then Kale said, well, yeah, we're going out of town, out, you know, on a vacation. We're leaving like in a couple of days. And he's like, oh, well, that's, you know, I didn't know that either. Um, we have a court case. And she's like, well, didn't you drop the child support? And he was like, well, no, you were supposed to give me proof that you dropped the 
protection order. Now, what I noticed that Kale said was, because he said, you have it, have you, you dropped it, right? And she was like, well, you know, I don't need it anymore, right? We've been getting along. She then said, I'm going to go to court tomorrow and I'm going to get the proof that I dropped it. I feel like she said that because she hadn't dropped it yet. Because the thing about it is when you drop something, they give you, they give you paperwork. So you would not have had to go to court to get a copy of anything because when you dropped it, they would have gave you a copy of all that stuff. And I feel like she keeps paper. It's always paperwork in her dang house. And that's the kind of thing that you that you keep. You don't get that drop and then you just don't know where you put it. So I feel like she did exactly what he said she did. She said she was going to drop it and then she hadn't dropped it yet because she specifically said, well, I don't need it, right? You know, because we're getting along. She didn't say, of course I dropped it. That's not what she said. We're, I don't need it. We're getting along. I'll go to court tomorrow and I'll get a copy of the fact that I dropped it. She probably went and got it dropped. And she hadn't done it yet. And that's the reason why he hadn't dropped his yet. Even though I think either way go with Patty on both of their sides. Um, I get why he didn't drop his if she didn't drop hers. Because y'all both was being Patty. You know, it is what it is. I think y'all both just file stuff to piss the other one off. And it's crazy. Um, I think Kale does stuff more than Javi, of course. Uh, but I'm not going to say Javi is completely innocent in, in the whole situation. Um, because, again, I still wonder why he was following with child support. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, he ends up, she eventually goes to court to get proof of whatever. She, like, sent him pictures of something. And he still hadn't dropped it. But he said he was going to go to court that day and drop it. And she can just go ahead and go to on the trip or whatever. And it was fine. And they can get along. And so, yeah, she went to court. I mean, no. She went on the trip. And that was her whole story. So, yeah, we have that. Um, between Brianna and Janelle, they both kind of got on my nerves equally. Um, Brianna's story was pretty simple. You know, she still is acting like she has no idea why, um, Louis left in the middle of the night. He left in the middle of the night because you, your mom, and your sister are, like, <sighs> y'all badger him. Y'all poke and 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 poke. And he said, fucking and left. I mean, that's at least what I thought it was. Um, so she's like, I don't know why he left in the middle of the night. Her mom was like, you know, the baby's only two days old. And he's running away like a bitch. His actions are horrible. And I guess he had texted her. And then he said, you know, I don't need anyone telling me what to do. We've had a conversation. You told me what I needed to do. But I don't need you to consistently keep talking about what you want me to do. And just keep you know, keep telling me about it. You know, he then said, I'll come during the day. I'm not staying at night. I don't see nothing completely horrible about that simply because she has already said that his presence irks her nerve. His presence makes her uncomfortable. So my thing is, the fact that his presence makes you uncomfortable, I'm pretty sure he can feel that. I'm pretty sure the baby can feel that. I'm pretty sure that makes that house a very stressful situation. And you have to remember, you also have your other daughter there. So if you are not okay with him being around, there's no point in him being around because it's going to be a place of contention completely. And your mom and your sister is going to just egg you on to fuck with him. And if you don't do it, then they going to do it. And y'all do all of it in front of Nova so that when she gets older, she's going to think that's how you talk to men. You can belittle them. You can degrade them in front of, you know, and my thing is, again, I'm not saying Lewis is perfect, but I'm saying they family seems like it's a cycle of, of the women being alone and having to do everything on their own and them kind of just being kind of browbeating them. Because my thing is, I just, when you see a family and there's no men around, you wonder, why aren't there any men around? Like, why doesn't her sister have a boyfriend? Why doesn't her mom have a boyfriend? You know what I'm saying? Something. Like, her mom is a single parent of two girls. Like, where are their fathers? And I don't know if they're saying they're dead or not or whatever. But, you know, it just seems like it's a cycle. And they are perfectly okay if the man ain't around. And my thing is, the way to get a man to do something is not to say, you ain't shit. You ain't gonna never be shit. I told you what to do. Why don't you do it? Do it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not a way to do it. Cause you that's just making them walk away. 
which is what <laughs> Lewis did. And it doesn't make it right, but you can't browbeat somebody and then expect them to just sit there and take it um, at all. Because again, he can be a father without having to be in your household. He can. But at the same time, you can be such, y'all, all three of y'all can be so mean to him that he can just say, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to go around it no more. And that don't make it right. But at the same time, you can't just be an asshole to people and be like, well, because you should you should be able to take it. You should be a man and do what I told you to do. And that's not fair to him. And it's not fair to the kids. And it's not fair to Brianna. I think they need to step back and let her handle her own life. But, anywho, um... She just responds to a text, and she basically says, like, you got two kids, now you need to grow up, you need to, you know, step up and do what you need to do. And my thing about that is, she keeps talking about, well, you got two kids, but so do you. And not only that, you knew he was a, a deadbeat to his first daughter when you got pregnant by him. I'm pretty sure that you knew when you were sleeping with that man that he wasn't a good father to, the, to, to his other child. So, you can't blame someone for being who they were when you met them. Get me? You know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't. You know what I'm saying? I can... If he was a person who wasn't working, he wasn't taking care of his other child, you can't then be like, oh, you are an even worse piece of shit now because you're not even helping me. He wasn't helping you in the beginning. And, you know, she brings up how... And my thing is, and they were talking about him... And Nova was sitting right there. And Nova's uh, like seven. Why are y'all talking, having these adult conversations in front of this child? Cussing and fussing and, you know, talking about Stella's father. Y'all also have before talking about her father. You should not, because she kids hear that stuff. You know what I'm saying? To me, that's a form of child abuse. Because you're instilling in that girl how she should act. You, you are instilling in her how she should talk about people. You're letting her know it's okay to talk bad about the person you're with. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay to, for your, your auntie to say your dad is a piece of shit. My, you can't do stuff like that. I mean, I think that's just crazy to not want to shield her from whatever struggles you're going through. A child should never be fully aware of how bad things are around them when they're that young. They shouldn't at all. As a parent, you should shield your child at least from the reality of being an adult. Like, your child should have no idea what adult situations are going on until they are old enough to understand it. And y'all have put that little girl into the space of being aware of every adult situation going on in that household. That ain't good. That's just my opinion. Um, so... And her mom was like, well, it's okay. You know, it's just us. You know, because he ain't going to be shit. He probably not going to come back around here. And he ain't this and he ain't that. Talking about Lewis. And I was just, you know, kind of over it. And then, you know, even when Brianna was saying, like, you know, he was so against adoption, but he's not even here now. I mean, with a baby two days old. You know, that's, that's, that's the first thing. And there's a difference between not wanting someone to give your child up for adoption and you wanting to try to be a parent to that child. But at the same time... Y'all are making it hard for him to be a parent because y'all are so hard on him. Like, if you try to just not be mean to him for one day and just see how it works. Like, see if y'all can be cordial to each other if he would be more included in what's going on. But if you just keep punching him in the face and punching him in the face and punching him in the face where you ain't shit, why don't you do this, why don't you do that? It's, that's why he ain't coming around. And again, I'm not saying this right. But you catch more flies with honey. Wait, is it catch more flies with honey? But you know what? Flies be around shit, too. So, you know, but it, you can catch flies either way. You want shit in your house? You want honey in your house? I don't want shit in my house. I don't. I don't want bees in my house, either. But if I had to have bees in my house, I prefer not to have shit in my house, too. But, you know, we see that he doesn't come back, as she said. And, you know, now we see that Stella is having like breathing drop breathing problems and they're having to take her to the hospital to the er um and she just texts Lewis and say i'm taking your daughter to the hospital and you know 
and he hasn't responded as of yet. And her mom's like, if he doesn't respond, you know, you should, you know, kick his ass. Well, yeah, you should, because, you know, you should respond when your child is sick. Absolutely. But, again, I'm just, let's hope he come back. <laughs> let's hope Louis is not gone forever. Okay? Let's just hope that. And that's how her particular story ended. You know, Janelle and her antics, this is the end of it. I'm over Janelle completely. You know, the, we so, they show the producers get into the house. And when they pull up, they don't go to the house. And the producers are talking. They're like, what is she texting you? We see that Janelle is texting the two producers. Basically saying that her and David are arguing. They're not having a good day. You know, David is upset. The baby is sleeping. You know, he's cussing and fussing and yelling at her. Um, how she's sad and everything is just, you know, just crazy, crazy, crazy. The producers were coming to take pictures of them, taking their say the day pictures. And that ain't what happened. And then Janelle, it's like, you know, David keeps arguing with me. And he's putting me down. He's making me feel so bad. Because David is an asshole. We're going to say that. You know, she then, the producer then said that Janelle is texting them saying that David said if they don't leave the property, he's going to call the police on them. And I keep thinking to myself, did David pay for the property? If Janelle put his name on the property, she's stupid. That's just my opinion. And so, you know, the producer's like, we have to go because he's going to call the police on us. Why would you call the police on the Teen Mom 2 producers? And that is a show y'all shooting. You know how much of an asshole you have to be to do that? When they are scheduled. Because when you do a show like that, you are, they're scheduled. They're, they schedule to come. They don't just show up. There is a schedule. So when they are scheduled to come, you're going to say, if y'all don't leave the property, we're going to call the police. I was just, you know, it was just dumb. And then the next day when they come, it's like the next day, 24 hours later. And, you know, the producer's like, you know, hey, how's everything going? And Janelle's like, oh, everything's fine. You know, it's cool. And she's like, yeah, so you guys okay? So you guys aren't arguing? She's like, oh, no, we're not arguing. Oh, come and look at my jellyfish. And I'm like, how you go from talking about how the day going to some jellyfish? And I'm like, she's changing the subject. So they go in the room. And there's some jellyfish in the thing next to her bed. Okay, cool. They then change in the baby's diaper. So they go back into the living room. And then the producer, like, I'm so happy that you guys are okay today, you know, since y'all were arguing yesterday. Which is what the producers do. It's a, it's a reality show about your life. If we were supposed to be here yesterday and we could not come yesterday because y'all were arguing, we're going to bring that up. That's just common sense. And David, you can, Janelle is sit, sit on the floor feeding the baby. And Dave is like, who? What? Huh? And she's like, were you guys arguing yesterday? Like, that's we were here and we couldn't come because you guys were, you know, having a bad day. And he's like, we were arguing? And he's looking at Janelle. And Janelle, can you me the bottle? Can me the bottle? Again, she's trying to change the subject. So someone hands her the bottle and she's like, well, I'm not trying to be, you know, crazy, but, you know, yesterday you were saying that you guys were arguing. So we're just saying that we're happy that you guys, you guys are okay today. And he's like, oh, so we were arguing. Janelle looked like a typical battered woman who was just praying to God that he doesn't beat her later. To me, that's what she looked like sitting on the floor, looking down, not making eye contact with anyone as David is looking at her like, why would you tell them that we were arguing? That is what that is. That is battered woman syndrome. And she never said nothing. And he kept on saying, we, we're fine. No negativity here, and he's putting the shades on because he's probably shooting killer darts at Janelle ass for telling him that. And he's like, you know, you should focus on the positive. We're we're positive here. You know, we don't like any negativity. I have to go to the store to get this. And the producer like, but we were here yesterday, and y'all didn't do the, the photos because y'all were arguing. Like, and she's like, am I going crazy? And he's like, I have to go. Whatever. And he leaves. Just rude, rude, rude. David is an asshole. David probably beats Janelle. That's just my personal opinion. I give their marriage two years. And I feel like when their marriage is over, she's going to go back to her mom. And she's going to be so apologetic. Her mom was right. Because I, he seems like he beats her. And as much as she gets on my damn nerve, I don't think any woman deserves to be mistreated, um, talked down to, uh, just abused in any way, whether it's mental, physical, or verbally. I feel like he does all of that to her. Because again, she was sitting on that floor looking like a battered woman. Like, I hope he don't beat me later. Um, if I just don't say nothing, you know, they'll stop asking me. And then we can just go on with the conversation. And that's all that it was. And you know, he leaves and you know it is what it is. You know, then there's a scene where, you know, 
Janelle's going to pick up Jace from Barbara. So Barbara calls her like, hey, have you planned Jace's birthday party? And she's like, no. And she's like, oh, well, you know, it's three weeks away. You know, where are you going to plan it? And she's like, you know what, Mom? Barbara, I just planned Kyle's party. I just did uh, David's party. And, you know, you have him. You don't want to give me custody of him. Why don't you do it? And I'm like, damn, bitch. She didn't call you for that. You could have easily said, I haven't did it. Do you want to do it? And not have all the animosity and the craziness of the argument. And so they hang up the phone or whatever. When she gets there, you know, Barbara's like, look, a therapist said that she wants y'all to do a therapy session just to y'all. You know, just y'all, not David. And she then gets mad. She's like, you know, because, and why are you telling him that he's going to be moving in? She's like, I said to him, you know, if you ever move in, and she's like, we just went to court. You know, you don't have custody. You think I'm not going to come going to go back for custody within a year? You think I'm not going to take you back to court? And I'm like, oh my God, why is they having this conversation? And she's like, why are you so miserable? Why are you so angry? I'm only miserable around you. I've been happy all day. So you can't hear, you know, come on, Jace, let's go. So they leave, and Janelle then says to Jace, I'm sorry for getting upset, you know, um, and getting loud. And he's like, you know, why did you get loud? And she's just like, well, because, you know, Mima, you know, is always arguing with me. And he was like, no, she's not. Jace notices that Janelle is she <laughs> crazy. Because he was like, she wasn't arguing with you. She was talking to you and you went off. So you, if your son says to you, she wasn't arguing with you. And he's saying right there, you should check yourself. Because that means something ain't right. So, yeah. You know, then the last of the scene, it's just, you know, her and David are finally taking these save the date photos and you know they're asking the same producer who he was rude to to push the button to take the god dang on pictures and they're taking the pictures jace is walking around playing in dirt kai's just screaming feed me he hungry and screaming to oh high heavens and Jan janelle and david is just taking pictures snap 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 for the save the day and Kyder is like screaming feed me because he hungry and they like and it's like because y'all had two days to take these pictures but y'all been arguing and y'all haven't taken them and now y'all want to take them and you know that's kind of how the episode goes off <sighs> Janelle I hope that's one day you get the courage to be as strong as you need to be without a man Okay, so that was my review <laughs> of Team Mom, and I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Until next time, people, peace.